so in the previous video we just declared and defined some of the registers such as ie register and tcon register and all the separate bits available in this interrupt enable ie register and the tcon registers so this tcon register is also required for implementing external interrupt in this microcontroller so that is why we have declared all these bits required for implementing external interrupt in the previous lecture and in this lecture we are just going to implement the programming part for executing external interrupt in this 889s52 microcontroller let's get started now let's try to write the program for implementing external interrupt 0 in this microcontroller initially what i'm going to do is i'm just going to initialize the value of this pin p1.0 which is connected to the led to be 0 so this is defined with the name port 1 p0 port 1 underscore p0 so i'm just going to use the same name for providing the value 0 so most oftenly when you are configuring a particular pin as output and using it in this microcontroller you just want to initialize the value of that output pin to be 0 initially because this will actually disable the internal pull-ups available for this particular pin so if you are configuring and using a particular pin as output in any 8051 architecture microcontroller you just want to initialize the output pins to be zero if you are using a particular pin as input that is not necessary because we will be using external pull-ups for the inputs Nextly, I am just going to enable the global interrupt enable bit of the microcontroller which is nothing but EA that we discussed before. So EA equal to 1 global interrupt enable and following that I am just going to enable the EX0 which is the external interrupt 0 bit because I am just going to use the external interrupt 0 bit right. So I am just enabling the external interrupt 0 since we are using the int 0 pin over here I am just enabling the ex0 of the microcontroller and thirdly as I said we just want to select the type of interrupt whether level triggered or edge triggered so that can be selected by using the it0 right because we are using ex0 that is int0 or external interrupt 0 we must want to configure that using this it0 and if you are configuring ex1 or external interrupt 1 you just want to use this it1 as i said i am just going to configure the type of interrupt to be edge triggered so i am writing 1 to this it0 it0 equal to 1 and nextly i am just going to write a delay function loop delay function unsigned int of d and inside the delay function i am just going to write only one loop which will decrement the value of d to be 0 so this loop will run until the d value becomes 0 so this is just a loop delay which will be used for producing rough delays in your program and nextly i am just going to implement the interrupt handler function or interrupt service routine function so syntax for this function is simple as usually we will start with void and the username whatever name you like you can provide it over here i am just giving it as sm academy which is the name of the academy followed by the braces and following this you just want to provide a keyword for mentioning that this is an interrupt handler give a space and you want to write interrupt and following that interrupt you just want to mention the number for the corresponding interrupt every interrupt available in this microcontroller is having a corresponding number that is provided in the data set over here you can see ex0 external interrupt 0 is having the number 0 and timer 0 is having the number 1 and external interrupt 1 is having the number 2 and timer 1 interrupt 
will have in the number 3 and serial interrupt will have the number 4 and timer 2 will be having the number 5. So these numbers cannot be changed if you are writing a subroutine function for timer 2 you just want to provide the number interrupt of 5. Since I am writing the subroutine function for external interrupt 0 I am just going to write the number 0 over here. So whatever interrupts you are writing you just want to maintain the numbering for that corresponding interrupts. So this number is also indirectly mentioning the priority of default interrupts that is nothing but that we discussed in the architecture lecture IE0 external interrupt 0 is having the highest priority and following that timer 0 is having the next priority external interrupt 1 nextly timer 1 serial and following that lastly timer 2 is having the least priority. So this is the user manual of 889SC51. So in this you can find almost all the relevant data for all the microcontrollers based on this architecture. So inside this function what I am going to do is I am just going to toggle the state of P1.0. So I am just going to write port 1 underscore P0 equal to port 1 underscore P0 XR of 1. So this line is useful for toggling state of P1.0. Now let's try to understand this line port 1 underscore p0 equal to port 1 underscore p0 xr of 1. Initially assume that the value of port 1 underscore p0 is 0. So 0 xr of 1 will give me 1 right. So this is the truth table 0 xr of 1 will give me 1. And I am storing the result in the same bit. So I will get the same bit value to be 1. And again when the same line is executed with the value 1 you can see 1 xr of 1 will give me the result 0 and again I am storing the result in the port 1 underscore p0 which is the same bit. So I am just clearing the same bit. So this line is helpful for toggling the state of the corresponding bit and now before this line I am just going to give a small delay of 1000 which is a loop delay for debouncing purpose. Now I am just compiling the sketch by using the icon over here or you can just click on this project tab and click on this build target. Coming to the Proteus software, double click on this microcontroller and click on this icon to load the program file. And go to the folder where you have stored the project files and inside the objects folder you will find the hex file. Click on this and click on open and click on ok. Now. I am just playing the simulation with the play button in the left bottom corner of the window. You can see initially the LED is turned off and whenever I press this button there will be a high to low transition in the INT0 pin so the interrupt will be triggered which will toggle the state of the LED. So whenever a high to low transition occurs in the button pin the state of the LED will be toggled. The operation of the program is simple. When the program starts, it will execute all the lines over here. It will enable the global interrupt enable bit, external interrupt enable bit and it will set the interrupt and it will initialize the port 1.0. After executing all these lines, the program execution enters into this while of 1 which is an infinite loop and it will be staying here stagnant because nothing is present over here. And whenever we trigger an interrupt by putting a high to low transition in the INT0 pin, what happens is the program execution pauses whatever it is doing right here and it will come over to the interrupt subroutine which is this function. And after reaching here it will start executing from here and it will execute all the lines present inside this interrupt subroutine function. And after executing all the lines over here, it will resume back to this function where it left and it will resume the process it was doing here. So this is the execution sequence for external interrupt program in this microcontroller. So that is why the LED is toggling 
whenever we are giving a high to low transition in this particular pin. You can see this is the development board that I am going to use for demonstrating all the outputs that I get in my hardware. And here in my development board you can see the ISP pinouts where you can connect the USB ASP programmer pinouts directly to this connector for programming this microcontroller or for uploading the hex file directly to this microcontroller. So the programmer that I am going to use is USB ASP programmer and I am going to connect the pinouts of this programmer to my ISP programming lines available in my development board like this and I am going to connect this USB ASP programmer to my PC through USB cable like this and the other end of my USB ASP programmer I am just going to connect that to the PC through USB cable you can see the terminal connections of ISP programmer is this one reset is connected to reset pin of the ISP programmer and the clock is connected to clock MISO to MISO, MOSI to MOSI and VCC ground to the respective pins. So you can see all the pins are directly provided in my development board or if you are not having a development board you can also build the circuit in a breadboard for uploading the hex to your microcontroller like this. So this is the pinout of this USB ASP programmer. I just want to connect the MOSI to the pin 6 and MISO to pin 7 and clock to pin 8 as well as the reset pin must be also connected to the pin 9 then the VCC must be connected to the pin 40 and ground must be connected to pin 20. In addition to this you just want to provide a 11.0592 MHz crystal to this 18th and 19th pin of the microcontroller and then you just want to pull this EA pin high so that you are indicating to the microcontroller that you are just going to use the internal ROM of the microcontroller. So using this circuit you can also upload the hex file to this microcontroller even in breadboard. After the connection is done open the program ISP software. The link for the software is provided in the description of this video you can directly download it from there. Now you can see in this software this program ISP icon is not highlighted that means the programmer is not yet connected. Before that you just want to choose the microcontroller that you are working on. So our microcontroller is 889S52 that is being selected but regardless of all the microcontrollers available you just want to select the microcontroller that you are working on. So I am choosing 889S52 and then now when I connect by USB ASP programmer USB cable to my PC you can see this icon is highlighted which means that the programmer is connected to the PC USB port. Now for uploading the flash or the hex file to this software you just want to click on this file tab and click on load flash and go to the respective project folder where you have stored the project files and there you can find the hex file inside this objects folder and click on this hex file and click on open. Now you just want to check the required operations that needs to be done when you click on this auto button. So I need the microcontroller to be erased as well as program the flash to the microcontroller and then after programming I want the flash to be verified. So these three are the operations that I need. So I am just leaving these three checked. Other than that I am not checking any other checkbox. And remember one thing that while programming the power from the USB ASB programmer is sufficient for the microcontroller. So you need not connect any external 5V signal to the microcontroller for powering up. Now for uploading the hex file just click on this auto button. Now you can see the hex file is being downloaded to your microcontroller 889S52. And the programming has been done. Now build the circuit to see the output in the hardware. So this is the development board hardware that we are going to use and as usual this is the port 1. You can see this first pin is the P1.0 and this 8th pin is the P1.7 
and this is the port 3 okay this pin is the port 3.0 and it goes till here that is p 3.7 so we know that the int 0 pin is p 3.2 so this pin p 3.2 i am just going to connect it to the push button over here so this push button is configured in pull up logic by default in this development board so i have connected the first push button that is this push button to the pin p3.2 that is int 0 pin that is external interrupt 0 pin and regarding the led you can see there are eight leds available over here this is the pin outs of the eight leds and i am going to use the last led that is this led for monitoring the interrupt change so i am just connecting this last led to the p1.0 pin that is the first pin of the microcontroller so that's all about the schematic and the circuit that we want to demonstrate for hardware so let's see the output in the hardware now as per our logic when i press this button the interrupt will be generated for the processor and the processor will be toggling the state of the p1.0 pin that is this led so when i press this button for the first time you can see the led has been lighted up that is the led pin has become high from low the led pin has been toggled so again when i press the button the same process happens and again the led pin will be changing its state you can see it has been turned off So this is the output that I got in my hardware. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching.